Hillsdale College was formed over 170 years ago, and it's a small college in Michigan that really focuses on American tradition through faith, through freedom, through character, and also education. Uh, they do offer a number of constitutional classes that are free to the public. I've taken a number of them myself. It's just one of those institutions that's promoting conservative American values. Uh, one of the things that they offer is their Halter Shooting Center. They do a lot of Second Amendment education, but it's a state-of-the-art shooting facility for trap and skeet. Uh, they're expanding that facility even more, uh, and they've just joined with the U.S. shooting team. In fact, Hillsdale College is the home of the U.S. shooting team. And so we just did an interview with Ashley Carroll from the U.S. shooting team, who is a world champion, and then also Barrett Moore, who is with the Hillsdale shooting team, which has done extremely well on the collegiate level. Now, these are two great examples of the next generation coming up. And guys, we've got to win over that generation to continue to hold fast to the Second Amendment. And promoting shooting sports with the youth, it's a lot of fun. It gets them out on the range. And again, it just makes American values even stronger. And I really appreciate GetZone.com for putting all this together. Uh, GetZone.com is a video platform. We do a lot of videos there, and they're a strong Second Amendment supporter. Hey guys, we're here with the USA shooting team and Hillsdale College, and we're going to bring to you something I think that's really unique. Uh, and it's a, it's a marriage to me that is just, it's, it's a marriage made in heaven. Uh, if you're not aware of Hillsdale College, uh, they have been around for over 170 years. They're down in southern Michigan. Uh, they are a stalwart for freedom, for the Constitution, for, you know, conservative values. And it's just an incredible learning uh, experience for their students. Uh, and there are about 1,500 students that go there. Uh, but the reach is considerably farther than that. Uh, in fact, they do uh, constitutional programs where you can even just free to the public. In fact, I've taken some of those classes. Uh, it's, they're just phenomenal. And the president of Hillsdale, Larry Arn, is he's just a huge asset to the commu to the conservative community. Um, and so this this has been something that has really been. Uh, foundational for our country and at this time obviously we need it more than ever. Now one of the things that Hillsdale does they have a shooting team. This actually had quite a bit of success. It's pretty impressive and so we have two different shooters and Ashley Carroll who is part of the USA shooting team uh, honestly has won all kind of awards. It's just really impressive. You can go to usashooting.org uh, and then we have uh, Barrett Moore, who is a student at Hillsdale. And so what's really beautiful about this, these two guys that are here today, is that one of them comes from just the shooting team, from the shooting sports, lives in California, which has its own <laughs> challenges. And then we have uh, a Barrett, who is a Hillsdale student, and came to Hillsdale for what they offer. And then they've come together with this, this shooting program. Uh, now, the U.S. shooting team was going through some trouble. It was during the, the COVID lockdowns and the pandemic. And back in 2019, Colorado Springs actually shut down a lot of their shooting facilities, made it really difficult for training. And so Hillsdale College stepped up. They have a world-class, the Halter Shooting Center. I mean, it is state-of-the-art. And they have been willing to invest $15 million into upgrading these facilities. And so the USA shooting has become a part of that. In fact, Hillsdale College is now the official home of the USA shooting team, which is just is beautiful, uh, especially for what Hillsdale stands for. I'm going to go ahead and introduce Ashley, Ashley Carroll. Uh, Ashley, uh, again, championship shooter. Tell us a little bit about what got you started into shooting and a little bit about yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm Ashley. Um, I started shooting in California through our youth program of SCTP. My whole reason for shooting is I didn't think it was fair that my dad got to shoot and I didn't growing up. So he used to take me to a Wednesday night shooting league and I complained so much he started not taking me. I was like, dad, it's not fair that I can't shoot, but you can. And he said, well, you're too young and you're too small. And I was like, that's not a good enough excuse. So I refused to go with him anymore. Until one night he told me, he's like, you need to come up and come to the shooting range. Everyone wants to see you. And I was like, nope, I'm not going. 
he's like, no, just come up. And I come up and there's a kid that was smaller than me shooting. I was like, oh, so he can shoot, but I can't. He's like, no, there's a new program starting on every Friday for kids. We're going to come up and see if they'll take you. I was like, okay, that's awesome. So I went Friday night and I got to shoot my first gun and I fell in love. So from there, I did a lot of SCTP tournaments throughout California. And then I got introduced to Kim Rohde at the Grand in Ohio. I think it was the last year Ohio had the Grand American. And she said shooting was an Olympic sport. And I was like, oh, okay, well, this is interesting to me. Let's see what it's all about. I went to Colorado Springs for a junior camp through SCTP to get introduced into the international games. And from there, I fell in love with it. So I've been shooting for, oh, this is scary, probably 12 years internationally, wow. or just from the start of my career. The last four have been really um, outstanding. I've had a lot of accomplishments overseas, which is the main goal in our sport. So now I'm just kind of sitting back, relaxing, trying to get through this COVID to see what's next for my future. Well, I'll tell you, I know you were 2019 world champion, so I know that there is a lot more great things to come. Okay, so okay. now, Bar Barrett, tell us about what got you started into the shooting sports. Thanks, Don. Um, Ashley, it's nice to see you. That was a, it's, it's very cool to hear your story. Uh, I, I didn't start shooting until two and a half years ago uh, at the beginning of my sophomore year. I, I came to Hillsdale as a freshman because I was looking for a, I was looking for a school that I went to a classical high school. I was looking for a liberal arts college that really understood and pursued truth. Um, and I didn't, I didn't really even know what that meant as a, a freshman in college, as a senior in high school. Um, but I, I, I knew that I didn't want to go to a, kind of a mainstream state school. And I fell in love with the people at Hillsdale when I visited here, not even really knowing what Hillsdale was fully. And I spent my freshman year here. I loved it. And I was working here over the summer, uh, going into my sophomore year for the admissions office. And I was working these high school camps, the Liberty and Learning Youth Conferences, where they invite high school students to, to come in and study the constitution and shoot guns for three days. And I was basically a camp counselor for these kids. And I, I lived in a dorm with them and took them to class and took them to meals. And I got to go to the range with them. And when we went to the range, it just so happened I got to spend all day on a trap line. I never, I never shot clays before in my life. And by the end of the day, I, I got to shoot quite a bit. And one of the instructors that day was Hillsdale's new assistant coach. Um, now my head coach, uh, Jordan Hintz. And he, he said, Barrett, have you ever done this before? And I said, I said, no, sir. He said, well, why don't you come back tomorrow and talk to me? I, I, I kind of want to talk to you about shooting. I said, all right. And so the next day I came back and talked to him and he said, well, You've never done this before, um, but you have you have a, a fair a fair bit of talent, and we I th there's I'd like to get you on the team. So I, you know a few a few weeks later he he chatted with the head coach. By the grace of God, a, a spot opened up on the team, and they said, "Hey, do you want, do you want to come onto the team?" I said, "I said sure." And so that fall, I I went I I joined Hillsdale College's varsity shooting team as a walk on my sophomore year. Um, and that was, that was the first time I had ever really done this was in August of 2018. And now I'm on scholarship here by the grace of God. Um, this is my, my third season shooting uh, and I love it. And I, I'm now, I'm a sporting clay shooter primarily, um, but I also shoot trap and ski. We all do, we're a small team. Um, we compete division three in SCTP and ACUI tournaments. Um, we, won, we won the ACUI national championship, I think six years in a row. Uh, perhaps it was five years in a row. I don't remember. Um, we got third place the following year, and then COVID happened last year. Um, 2019, I was on the team. We, we won first place at the SCTP National Collegiate Tournament. Um, and we have both, both the SCTP Collegiate Tournament and the ACUI Tournament coming up next month in March. I think on our, on our board, it said we've got, we've got 10 practices until we go to nationals. <laughs> so we're getting pretty excited. That is, that is pretty, that's awesome. You know, it's, it's funny, and we were talking about this beforehand, but, you know, Ashley comes from not knowing anything about Hillsdale College, you know, not really knowing anything, and was kind of introduced to Hillsdale because of the USA shooting team, because of the facilities. Here, Barrett comes only for Hillsdale College and is introduced to shooting, <laughs> you know, in a, in a more, 
uh, organized way. And then now you're both shooting and, uh, you know, and really perfecting your skills and becoming, you know, an advocate, honestly, for the shooting sports. Uh, and, and that's a beautiful thing. Uh, let me ask you, um, Ashley, I'm going to start with you. What is it, um, what's important to you about the Second Amendment? I mean, what, what are ways that you feel like that maybe you're promoting the Second Amendment with what you do? Uh, of course, you know, being in the shooting sports, it's not so much as a self-defense, but it's more just the, the ability to, to have firearms. What are your thoughts on that? So my thoughts on it is that shooting brings more than just a protection part of it. It brings a sport. It brings a community together that I don't think anyone expected to gain from shooting sports. Um, I know I grew up in a very small town. I only knew whoever went to my school. When I went into high school, I ended up knowing twice as many people because of the shooting sports, because of what my club, my shooting club gave me growing up. And now with USA Shooting, I've gained friends all over the world. I gave, I gained friends that I communicate with in different states. I go see, and it's when we relate to each other or we meet each other, it's like we never left each other. Right. It's an awesome feeling being able to have that little community, that friendship and everything on top of it, us promoting shooting and not a way of just protection or in a way of self-defense, in a way of bringing it as an Olympic sport. It also brings a huge opportunity to kids or grownups or anyone that has not a disability, but doesn't have the performance standards to play other sports. A lot of the kids that I went to school with weren't good at football, weren't good at basketball, weren't good at baseball. But for some reason, shooting gave them that sport. It gave them the competitive edge, gave them the opportunity to be an athlete in a different way. It also brings a huge opportunity to people in wheelchairs or older, um, older people that might not have the ability to walk as much. They can still shoot in a chair. They can still be able to do things that other sports or other activities have limited them to, which is a huge, I think, opportunity to realize for everyone in the US or overseas to gain a little bit of, I guess, self-worth or just feeling like, oh, I can accomplish something that someone else can do that I might not be able to accomplish in basketball or in volleyball or in baseball. So it's a great discipline and it's a great opportunity to meet new people and be able to like push yourself to accomplish things in life that you thought you were limited to. Right. That's that, those are great points. Great points. Barrett, how do you feel about what you do promoting the second amendment? Um, what are your thoughts on that? I've noticed, uh, you know, among some of my peers at Hillsdale, uh, among people who weren't raised with firearms around or raised with parents who shoot or raised with firearms you know, in and around the home, that there, there's kind of an aura of mystery and fear around guns just because, you know, there's a certain power there. Um, you know, gun, gun, guns have a, you know, a certain capabilities. And there, I, I found that usually it's just because people really don't understand what, what firearms are. And at least for me, like a fire, a firearm's a tool. And it's, it's a tool for my sport. Um, it's a tool for hunting. I grew up, you know, deer hunting, shooting rifle and pistol um, with my dad. And it's a, it's a tool for self-defense, worst case scenario. But it's, it's well, I mean, literally, what is a firearm? It's a mechanical device made up of, of metal and wood in some cases, you know, put together to perform a certain function. It's like, it's like a drill or a hand, you know, even, even a hammer in certain respects. Um, I, I have a, one of my closest friends, he lives right, right upstairs. He went to Marine Corps officer candidate school this past summer. And he was a little bit nervous going into it because he'd never handled firearms before. He'd, he'd never held it. He'd never held a gun before. And on his like third or fourth day, they issued him his M16 that he was going to carry around for the rest of the summer. Uh, and he, you know, he remembers whole, he was telling me about holding it for the first time. He was like, Oh my gosh, I'm like, I'm, I'm holding a rifle. <laughs> and he, he, he didn't know what to do with it. Um, you know, and like for when, when I went to officer candidate school, for me, it was just like, Oh, you know, sling it. All right. I know, I know exactly what I'm doing with this, you know, um, been there, done that shot these clean these. Um, but for him being, you know, carrying it around every day, not, you know, going everywhere with it. And then every day having to clean it make sure it was spick and span, um, understanding how all of the internal parts of the gun functioned. Uh, he, he came out of, OCS with a, a new appreciation 
for firearms and, and no more fear because he understood, you know, he understood that they were tools. He understood how they worked and what they did. So. I think that is a brilliant point and something that, uh, you know, that people have to recognize that it is just a tool. You know, you want to ban spoons because they make you fat. You know, it's a choice. You use the spoon sure. to eat, but you have to have the responsibility. Sure. And I think knowing it, I, I know a number of people that I've taken for the first time to the range and they were, they were very apprehensive, but it seems like once they, they saw what was going on and they, they always enjoy it. They always, mm -hmm. it always puts a smile on their face. And I think that one of the things about firearms is they're misunderstood. Mm -hmm. You know, they're misunderstood. And I think that's one of the big things. And, and I think that's great to, because of what you guys do. It's, it's an easier way to bring in firearms as a tool than for someone that's carrying it just for self-defense. Okay, let's talk though about the, the Halter Shooting Center. Uh, you know, with the U.S. shooting team coming in, I think Hillsdale College is spending like $15 million to invest into the, the program. And there is a learning center there as well, I believe, where mm -hmm. they, they teach a lot about firearms sure. and, and about probably the uh, Second Amendment is probably uh, promoted there. Uh, so Ashley, you coming in, you found that what was your what are your thoughts about the halter shooting center are you glad that the usa shooting has partnered with hillsdale yes very glad that hillsdale and usa shooting has partnered with each other um i have traveled to many bunkers in the u.s and hillsdale actually is probably one of the only bunkers that is for the public or for training purposes to be very similar to overseas international bunkers. So Hillsdale is giving the USA shooting team the option of going there and training before a match to really kind of get the whole atmosphere of traveling internationally. It's giving them the practice of, okay, like this is how the backgrounds are going to be. We're shooting on a true flat background. Like this is what it looks like. This is what we're getting. So you can work on little details that you might not be able to work at your home range because of how the background is at your home range. So Hillsdale, when I was there, they only had one bunker. And the first time I shot it, I was like, holy crap. Okay. <laughs> like, okay, I see where they're coming from. This is amazing. Um, everyone shot good. I mean, I, I felt so in control at a new place, only ever seeing it for that time, walking up on the line for the first time and kind of looking at it and like, okay, I have ideas of how I want to shoot this. Let's go and shot my first shot. And I was like, okay, this is easy. Let's do this. Like I got this. And that's, you know, that's the confidence that you need before you go overseas in Hillsdale building four other bunkers to match overseas lookalikes or, you know, just matching the whole range where it's all similar is going to be amazing to the team USA. And it's amazing to Hillsdale their team members too, to be able to experience international trap kind of for the first time, if that's, you know, the first time ever shooting in a overseas perspective, it's amazing. Right. So it just gives some advantages to the U S shooting team. They didn't have before. Mm -hmm. as well. yes. Yeah. Okay. Barrett, what are your thoughts on the halter shooting center? I mean, the halter shooting center is home for me. Right. Like that's right. that, uh, that, you know, home home field advantage. Whenever we we've got a we've got a, a little home collegiate shoot coming up on March sixth, and I, it's it's always very unfair because we we always wipe the floor with whoever comes to shoot against us when we're at home. Um, Halter's great. We've I uh, we you know we've had one bunker for a while. Um, it's been my my first experience shooting bunker. But what Ashley does is really hard, and she's really good at it. And but like the, the the targets are the targets are wild fast. You know, and they, they they fly at some pretty steep angles compared to what we do in collegiate competitions. Um, so right now we have, I think we have seven American trap fields um, and one American skeet field. But soon, you know, you know, we're going to have all the, 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 the four other bunkers are going to be finished. The three other skeet fields are going to be finished. Um, we have a, our own five stand course. And then we have a, a 22 station sporting clays course, which is like my my bread and butter i love sporting clays and the 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 gentlemen we have working at the range are they set some excellent targets um and ha having a home sporting clays course i think is really beneficial especially in collegiate competitions because sporting clays is the the, the kind of competition where it, it's like golf everywhere you go uh, the, the sporting clays course is going to be different 
Um, you know, every golf course you go to is going to be different. Um, every time you visit a, a certain, a certain place to, to shoot their sporting clays course, they'll have set different targets. They'll have moved stations around to different places. So you never quite know what you're going to expect. So having, having 22 state, having our own sporting clays course is amazing. Having 22 stations with four traps on every station that we can move around, we can set, you know, we can set whatever targets we need to train on quartering birds, chandelles, battues, like the whole nine yards. Um, so that's just phenomenal, especially and when the weather's nice, especially in the fall going out, you know, when the colors are changing on the sporting clays course, it's amazing. And it's beautiful. And I, I am very happy with Hillsdale's shooting center. I could not ask for anything more. That is awesome. Well, it's really great that Hillsdale with the foundations they have and in that marriage with USA shooting, it's just, it's a great thing. And the facilities, I think that uh, I'd read where the USA shooting had like a six and a half million dollar uh, budget, annual budget. And being able for Hillsdale to come in and partner with them, and I think it's a 10-year partnership, uh, they've come in and really invested to make the U.S. shooting team just have a better home. And, and I really think that, that that's really amazing. Uh, and the, the instructors there, you'd say that they are your, the people that are there running the facility or just Oh, absolutely. They're, 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 they're professionals completely. Um, our, the, the range master, uh, he, he's very good at what he does. Um, he's, He's kind of he's been in charge of the range since uh, since they built it originally. Um, and a few gentlemen who work there as instructors who are seasoned shooters, uh, they they run. Um, one of them taught me how to shoot initially. Um, or you know my coach is there, um, but the the these instructors who are there at the Halter Shooting Center, they they teach lessons to students. Um, that their the Halter Shooting Center offers actual shotgun, rifle, and pistol and firearms classes I think they offer archery as well to, to students to come out on Saturdays once a week and shoot for you know a nominal course fee like it's like a $90 course fee to go shoot you know for like eight or nine weeks you know every weekend wow. it's you know for students that that is a that's a a phenomenal opportunity especially for people who are not around firearms all the time um the range is open to the public so public uh members of the public can buy memberships uh and come and shoot there um, and then Hillsdale also offers uh, different courses um, like the, the Ladies for Liberty, um, the Liberty and Learning Youth Conferences, where, where you know, people of different ages can come from outside and spend time at Hillsdale College, take classes in American history, in the Western heritage, in the Constitution, uh, and then also go out to the range and shoot and receive firearms training. Um, and it's, it's just a, a, a wonderful combination of things that Hillsdale does. Man, that sounds like the perfect opportunity for me. <laughs> you need to come visit. I need to. I need to. So what about training? I mean, what is it that is kind of your daily regimen or, or your training schedule? Uh, Ashley, what, what are you having? To, what do you go through as a uh, on the, um, the USA shooting team? Well, it all depends on what matches are coming up. So let's say I have a match in a month coming up. Um, I would start out kind of planning on what I need to work on. I work on a lot of targets. I don't really do a lot of rounds. Um, I like to develop the sight picture. I like to run my routine. And a routine is one of the most important parts in a shooting sport to do it accurately and do it to every time. And it's kind of like a fundamental aspect. It's something that your mind, you know what to do. So you tell yourself, but subconsciously you're doing it at the same time. Um, so for me, if I'm looking at a month out competition, I'm going to be practicing three to four times a week. And that's just mostly on let's do a round to warm up. And then after that, let's work on our fundamentals. Let's look on, work on our routine, doing things the same every single time. And then from there, I might say, you know what, I'm done shooting targets. I'm done shooting practice for a little bit. I'm going to do a little mini matches and I go out and run my routine as best as I can. And if I have a flaw, I figure it out. And then from there, I just keep training on the same exact thing every single time. And when we get to the match, you always learn something at a match. Um, you can practice as much as you want on things that have happened in, in the past. And eventually a match comes up and something new pops up. And that could be, you know, a little fundamental thing of I'm tired. My eyes aren't working good. It's really windy or little things that you weren't kind of prepared for, but you work through it. Or it could be the mental side of it, which... That's another thing I probably don't do as much as I should. Um, but the mental side is a huge part of our game. And to be able to run your routine every single time and do it confidently is key to our sport. 
And when you get to a match, something could pop up in your mind, like, man, there's a weird sound or a car alarm goes off. We always say at a USA shooting match between our, between my friends, it's not a true match until a car alarm goes off. <laughs> there's usually at least a car alarm that goes off during like practice days, but the first day of a match, there's always a car alarm, right? So during a match, when you hear it, you kind of giggle to yourself, but then you have to slap yourself kind of in the face, like, okay, get back into your rhythm, get back into your routine. So preparing yourself training wise is you're kind of preparing for anything to happen, but in reality, you need to train your sport. You need to train what you want to do as an individual. If I want to go out and I want to shoot every 45 and know exactly how to shoot it and be confident in it, that's what I'm going to train for. Um, so it's kind of, everyone's a little different. Some people do mini competitions leading up all the way to the match. I prefer targets and that's just how I am. But the, the main part is going out and shooting the same process you'll be shooting in a match. And that's the main goal of our sport. Right. Very good. Barrett, tell us about how you guys train. Sure. It's, it's very similar, very similar to, you know, it's the same sport. It's very similar to, the, to what Ashley was saying. Uh, for me, I, I actually am a, a little bit more match oriented where I, I'll work. So right now, you know, we have, we have competitions coming up that are, that are a month out and I know I'll be shooting sporting clays, tra American trap and American skeet. And at this point I, I've planned out, I, I know what I need to work on in each, in each discipline technically. Um, and I've, I've pretty much worked through all of, all of the individual target kinks um, in skeet in, in trap. I, I know I've, I've made my plan essentially for, for what I need to work on over the next few weeks. So I'll spend a little bit of time um, at practice. I, I practice three times a week, um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday after class. Uh, and then if we don't have a competition that weekend, I'll go out on Saturdays as well. Um, and we'll, you know, I'll usually shoot about a hundred targets a day, sometimes a little bit more than that. Um, and, and for the, for the next, you know, week and a half, I'll, I'll finish working on a, a few, a few technical elements, um, the way, the way I'm seeing a target, if I, if I'm struggling, I struggle on, on post one in American traps sometimes, um, with, with hard left hand targets. So like Ashley said, I'll just, I'll just train those targets. I'll, I'll work, just work on the left hand. I'll sit on, I'll sit, spend a whole practice sitting on station one, working on those targets. Um, and then leading up to the match, I, I like to focus a lot more on the mental game. Um, so keeping my focus during a round, that's, a, that's another thing that I'm, I'm focusing on this spring is I, I find myself losing focus in the middle of a round where I'll, I'll lull myself into kind of a, a sense of security. And so, so I need to remember to constantly be going through my process because the, the way to shoot well and shoot consistently, it's not, it's not just doing whatever works to hit the target. Like the hitting the target at the end of the day, doesn't justify your routine. Hitting the target should be the result of a good routine done right every time. Uh, and it just so happens that that helps you hit the target. So for me, it's, it's, remembering to and focusing on my routine every single target um, and maintaining that through a, through a whole round, through a whole competition. That's good. You know, that really relates to, to other competitive shooting sports. Um, mm -hmm. I've done a lot of competitive shooting, mainly with 45, 1911, 45s, combat matches and things like that. And, um, you know, the things that you guys are talking about and what I would like for our viewers to kind of get mm -hmm. is that, you know, just having the gun and going out to the range and shooting a little bit does not bring you up to any kind of proficiency. You really need to put a lot of mental effort into it. You know, again, staying focused, uh, doing the, you know, practicing, going through, you know, different scenarios that you, you could possibly go through. Sure. It's funny when um, Ashley mentioned that, uh, you know, something new, learn something new every time. And it's true, right? You're, you're going through it and something goes wrong. It's being able to adapt to it as well. So um, it, it's a discipline. There's an art to practicing well, I think. You, you, you need to know what you're doing. You need to have a plan. You need to execute the plan. Um, one, of the, one thing that's helped me a lot this year is our, our coach gave us all little notebooks to keep in our shooting bag. And before every practice, we have to spend a few minutes and write down what we're working on that day, you know, how, how, how we're planning, how this practice is going to help prepare us for nationals, um, and what we're going to do that practice. What, what, you know, what our focus is. And then afterwards, you know, after practice, write in again and talk about what we did, how we felt, whether it was good or not, what we liked, what we didn't like, what we're going to do better next time. Um, 
And that just that that's a very, a very practical thing that's helped me learn how to practice well um, and frankly, get the most out of every shell. Now, the next question, um, in fact, we were kind of talking about this earlier is because of what you do, people ask, they'll say, well, what do you do? And when they get to know you, then when they find out that you're part of the shooting sports community, what are reactions from people that have no experience with firearms? And I'm going to start with you, Ashley, when you're, when you're talking. I mean, for me, you know, with my YouTube channel, people say, what do you do? And I tell them I'm a gun reviewer. And they're like, you know, they have different reactions. You know, so what is the reactions that you're getting a lot of times with uh, people that are not possible gun owners? It's pretty much the same reaction. Um, it's always a little awkward describing what you do because I think it's so unknown. A lot of people ask me, like, I'm back in school. And they're like, why are you, like, what have you been doing for the last couple of years? I'm like, well, you know, I've been traveling. I was an athlete. And then when they ask you what type of athlete you were, you're like, uh, I shoot shotguns. And they kind of give you this look like that's a, that's a sport. And you have to explain to them like, yeah, on the you know USA shooting team, it is Olympic sport. A lot of people don't hear about it. And then after I tell them that I get to travel internationally and nationally almost every single month, they think it's a really cool thing. And I say, yeah, it's super neat. You know, anyone can get into it. But it's always that little bit of a hint of you don't know how people are going to react to you, especially because it's shotgun or shooting or it's guns, and you're kind of like okay, well, you know, I'm going to explain it from my perspective. I'm going to explain it. It's a sport. It's just like anything else. It's just like a baseball bat. You know, it's, it's the same idea. Like I go to the shotgun range. I shoot little clay targets about this big. They blow up. It's really fun. Um, other than that, that's the only thing I use my gun for. And then they kind of get the idea like, okay, I get it. And a lot of people have heard of skeet shooting or the general idea of skeet shooting. So they're like, oh, so you're like a skeet shooter. I'm like, yeah, I do traps. So they're all going away, but yeah, pretty much the same idea. And they're like, oh, okay, well, that's cool. And then it's kind of a done deal, but they, I don't think anyone really realizes how big the sport is in general when you say it. So um, it depends on how much you want to tell someone too. I usually kind of keep it plain Jane, kind of on the humble side. I'm like, yeah, I just shoot like, yeah, team USA. Cool. This is real neat. But um in reality, I think a lot of people realize once you tell them, like, that's the coolest thing ever. You get to travel the world doing that. I'm like, oh, yeah, I've been to, you know, this country this year. I've been to six countries this year and uh, go on and on about it. And they're like, man, that is so cool. I'm like, really? Okay, well, I didn't think it was that cool, but <laughs> I do it for a living. And when you talk to people that do it, like all of us that explain guns and go shoot, it's kind of like a normal everyday activity. It's like waking up and brushing your teeth. It's kind of like I'm thought of being something unique and different to other people. Right, right. Barrett, what are your experiences uh, when approaching non-gun owners? Usually, well, I, I have, I have a, I have a one of my close friends. Dad, dad always says, uh, you know, I, I, I. I support the second amendment, but I don't practice. And I was like, Oh, okay. That, I, I, that, that's a fun attitude. Um, generally there, there are two, there are two kind of responses when people hear that, you know, I, I'm involved with guns or I'm on a shotgun team. Like you're on a college shotgun team. You mean like shotgunning beer? Like, no, <laughs> no, very much not that. And then there's, there's a, you know, an explanation very similar to Ashley's that follows. Um, and then otherwise, then some people are like, whoa, I've never heard of that. That's pretty cool. Um, I've never, I've never had a, a, actually a, a kind of an affronted negative reaction um, from someone. Uh, perhaps it's only a matter of time. Uh, you know, my, my parents put it on the, after I started shooting, my parents put it on the Christmas card that I was on a shotgun team. And they, they, they chuckled themselves that they had a couple friends who probably weren't going to take that very well. <laughs> but um, I personally haven't. I've only ever had positive reactions. You know, it's just like this ammunition shortage. And I don't know how that's affected you guys. You know, um, me personally, I'm okay. But that's because I have team allotment shell. Plus I have, um, I've been sponsored by federal for the last two years and they helped me out. Um, I just called federal not too long ago and I was like, Hey, I'm just curious, do you guys have any extra ammo for a fundraiser that I know about that's having a hard time? And they're like, we can't promise anything. 
we're hurting just to, you know, fill our sponsored athletes and we don't know what's going to happen. And I haven't been able to find ammo here in Georgia since no, October, November. Hmm. You go yeah. in the stores and it's like, they don't even have an ammo section anymore. Yeah. That's what, um, yeah, we, we've had a hard time here. And then if you do find it, it's super expensive. Yeah. You know? I've been seeing that online, like one box of federal 25 was like $49 somewhere. And I was like, Holy crap. Yeah. I can make, I could be making a killing if I could sell my ammo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but thank God I have the Oki is my ammo sponsor because nice. otherwise it would just be. And, and it was funny because they had a change in their marketing, their, their marketing team. And so I had to search around and try to find who, who to contact because it's that time for them to resupply because they, they supply me annually. And um, I was, now I have ammo because <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> but I don't want to use that ammo. That's my personal ammo. So, yeah. you know, I, I use the, the Fiocchi is great, but uh, a buddy of mine who was a police officer, he, he sent me a message right at the beginning of 2020. And he said, what is going on with the ammo? And he sent me a picture and the shelves were empty. And I was like, what? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't even, I was like, yeah. are you kidding me? You know, so, um, but, and that's before the civil unrest started, you know, so then that really caused another one, another blowout, you know, and the thing is these companies, they're producing, you know, 30% more. I mean, they're working 24 seven, but the demand is 200% more. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, um, but anyway, it, it's just crazy. Ashley, let's get some last thoughts. Uh, and what overall are you excited about uh, with the Hillsdale Union with USA Shooting? Uh, and how do you feel like it benefits what you do? The relationship that we're going to have with Hillsdale is going to benefit me as well as all my teammates plus Hillsdale because we're going to be able to grow as a family. We're going to be able to teach each other, learn from each other, have relationships with each other, be able to, you know, have something that's unique in our nation. On the other side, Hillsdale is going to give USA Shooting a training facility that's going to be outstanding. It's going to be able to open up opportunities for camps to get more young shooters involved into the Olympic sports or just sports in general. Um, I know that USA Shooting, I think, has already planned on doing a little youth camp there they're hosting two different matches the junior olympics and they're also hosting i think nationals if it actually happens because you know covid but at the same time hillsdale is opening up opportunities for us to come and explore something new invest in something new while investing in ourselves to be able to perform at the top level to be able to go overseas and try to beat the top level in the world right and that that is awesome and Barrett, how do you feel about USA shooting team coming into Hillsdale? It's very exciting for all of us. Um, when we first heard that we were going to have some Olympians come and shoot with us <laughs> last year, that, that was pretty awesome. And I, I had the opportunity to shoot sporting clays with Ashley's coach, Jay, uh, which, which was amazing. I, we, we had a great time. I think, I don't remember. I might, I might've beat him that day. I don't remember. <laughs> um, it was, it was close one way or another. Um, but it, I, I love like, the it 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 kind of brings a it, it highlights both the shooting sports and what Hillsdale's doing this this partnership, um, and in many ways I think shooting as a, as an art as a skill as a sport uh, is it's kind of a, a practical manifestation of the education that we're that we're receiving here at Hillsdale. Part part of uh, our education is in 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 virtue and and competence. Um, learning, learning what it means to be a, a good human being at the end of the day. And part, part of that is doing what you do, doing what you do, whatever it is, doing it well, and bringing in Olympians who, who are the best in the world at this, best in the world at shooting. It's, it's a very real world practical manifestation of, I think, the education that we're receiving at Hillsdale. So being able to, to show that and partner with them uh, is pretty awesome. It's the two convergence of excellence. Yes. And, you know, I know that Hillsdale stands for, you know, learning, higher learning and, you know, building character, mm -hmm. freedom and promoting the ideals that, you know, provide for us the freedom we have and for our faith or religious liberties. 
which to me all converge into one. Yes, all those things are connected. You you can't you can't have liberty. You you can't learn to have good character. You can't learn to be a virtuous person without good education. Good education is is the way to all of those things, um, and that's what that's what we're doing here at Hillsdale. So it's it's just really exciting that we get to share that with more people too. That is awesome. Okay, guys. Well, we really appreciate you two both being on here. It has been an incredible experience. And it's really great too with youth because, you know, we've had this foundation and the older generation that's really held on to the Second Amendment, you know, is, is growing older. It's great to see young people coming in and a way for us to bring in more people into the fold of the Second Amendment uh, to, and to protect, for, for that matter, our entire Constitution because that's really what's at stake. Uh, if you want more information about Hillsdale College, you can go to uh, Hillsdale EDU, EDC, and then was it EDU, EDU. EDU. I'm thinking of my EDC, my everyday carry. Um, <laughs> Hillsdale.edu and USA Shooting at usashooting.org. And so, uh, and two, I would highly recommend going to usashooting.org and just looking at Ashley's long list of titles. <laughs> it's very impressive. But uh, guys, thanks so much for being here today. And this interview has been great. Uh, I love again that, you know, Ashley, you come in from the USA shooting team coming in this way to Hillsdale. You know, Barrett is at Hillsdale and he's being introduced to the USA shooting team and growing the Second Amendment. So um, again, thank you so much. Uh, we really do appreciate you guys being on here. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. Thank you, Don. Good to see you, hey, Ashley. Man. It has honestly been a real pleasure. You guys, both of you guys are great. Oh, okay. I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I'm, going I'm like, okay, think about the question. Okay, okay. <laughs> we're, we're easy and very relaxed and having fun. You know, the thing is too is, and, and I love it with you guys, y'all are just so natural and you're just doing your thing. and really good on video very good i really appreciate it